Lord, your promises remain. We trust in you. Our faith and trust is in you and everything that you do, everything that's in your word. We thank you, Lord, because you are faithful. You are faithful to be here with us. And Lord, we ask as now as we gather together, whether we're in our living room, kitchen, or somewhere in the garage, or out in the field, wherever we are, Lord, you are with us. And so, Lord, we ask that um, you continue to be with us tonight. We love you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, um, thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you. Uh, I pray that you and your family are all doing well. I hope that uh, during this time of quarantine that you have grown in your faith, you have grown in the Lord and in his word. Now, tonight we were scheduled to continue our verse-by-verse study of the book of Genesis. However, I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to give you an update regarding our response as a church here at Calvary Chapel to the state order in keeping our doors closed. So, Lord willing, we will continue our study of the book of Genesis next week. You know, it has been uh, two months since we as a church have um, gathered together. We have complied with the federal and state regulations, uh, uh, door closing, um, not only to us as a church, but we believe every business, school, um, restaurant. And um, at the beginning of, of this closing, the church, we felt that it was wisdom. It was, it was wisdom for us to close our doors because of this virus. And so we obeyed and we followed the state uh, stay-at-home order uh, issued by uh, in the federal level and also in our state, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The coronavirus is a global pandemic. It's not just here at home, and I'm sure we all know that. It is a serious virus, very contagious, and is life-threatening, as we know, if taken many lives, especially with the elderly and those with uh, underlying health issues. And so currently, some of the counties here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania are in the yellow phase, and that means that they are beginning to open their doors uh, to, for business um, and providing that they keep uh, with the safety regulations uh, six feet away and so forth. However, here in Pike County, uh, we're still in the red. We're still in the red phase. And so that means as per... Uh, the state, our doors are to remain closed. And so, with that said, how should we, as a church, respond to the state's order in continuing to keep our doors closed here, Calvary Chapel of Milford? Now, I have struggled with this for some time now. As a matter of fact, uh, during the week of Passion Week, Holy Week, as we celebrated uh, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. Since then, it was difficult for me uh, to keep these doors closed. Um, it's not easy for pastors to shepherd his flock without being with the flock. We as a church have reached out to as many people as possible in our fellowship. Uh, we kept in touch with those who were sick, and we kept in touch with those who are in need. We've live streamed our worship services, our Bible studies on Facebook and uploaded them on YouTube. Today makes a total of about 59 days, almost 60 days total, two months since we've seen each other's faces, since uh, we fellowship and worship the Lord together. And so I have been praying, seeking the Lord's wisdom and direction regarding opening our doors again. I grew up in church. Church is my life. I love the church family. The church has always been a blessing to me. I love the Lord and I love the people in the church. And so I miss the church greatly. 
And if there's anyone who really wants the church together, it would be a pastor. I know for me, I do. And so I prayed and, and sought the Lord regarding this matter. I was even blessed last, past Friday to Zoom live with over 30, 30 Calvary Chapel pastors in the New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. And together we encourage each other and we have different thoughts of whether or not to open our doors or to keep them closed. And though I've received much wisdom and insights, I am so grateful, as always, I, I greatly appreciate the fellowship we have. What an incredible support. Uh, so your pastor um, is encouraged all the time with great godly men of wisdom who've been in ministry for years, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, and I really cherish their, their friendship, their brotherhood, and the wisdom that I get from them all the time. And though I received uh, many, if much information from them, and, and you know, some were divided and still praying, and some have already made their decisions, whether to continue forward in opening their doors or to remain closed. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted. The thing was, I needed to seek the Lord, see what He wanted. The one thing clear is that this coronavirus is contagious and people are dying. That's one thing I need to know and understand. However, I did not want my decision uh, to be influenced and altered by all the misinformation that's been going out there, whether it's through, the mass, through mass media, through social media, YouTube. Um, there are so many different reports uh, that are going around. And again, one thing we do know is that this, con this virus, the coronavirus, is real, it is contagious, and people have died from this virus. And so I spend much time with the Lord and in prayer, and I sought the Lord's wisdom only from the scriptures, simply just the scriptures. I looked at the facts, not the conspiracies, not the misinformation of data. The, the facts that we know about this virus is that it's global, it's contagious, and it is deadly. It could actually take a life. That we know, without doubt. Those are the facts. Regardless of the numbers from state to state, country to country, Regardless of the conspiracies, those are the facts. So took these facts, and then I wanted facts, <laughs> the best source that any man of God or any believer in Jesus Christ could find, and it's through God's word. And so with that said, how should we as a church, I'm speaking only for Calvary Chapel of Milford. I am not speaking for the church down the road, other uh, Calvary Chapel Fellowship, or other churches or denominations around the world or in any state, I'm only speaking for us here, Calvary Chapel of Milford. How should we respond as a church to the state order in continuing to keep our doors closed? With that, I like to look at scripture. When we seek the wisdom of God in any decision, there is no better source, even today, even with this coronavirus, there is no better source than to look to God's word. And so, I, again, I did not want my decision or our decision as a church to be altered or influenced by outside sources. Looked at the facts, and I looked at scripture. So let's look at what the scripture has to say. The first thing God told, tells us, he mentioned to his disciples back in Matthew chapter 10, verses 16. Jesus sent his disciples out as we've been sent out almost 2,000 years ago, and we're still being sent out today. Jesus said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We've been sent out two years ago as a church. We particularly have been here for seven years. 
Many of you have been a believer for maybe a year, 10 years, 20 years. You've been sent out to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to be wise and we need to be harmless or another translation, gentle as doves in anything we do. And so we need to be gentle. Now, I want to give you two passages in scriptures that commands us, encourages us, and teaches us how we should respond to the government. How we as believers are to respect, submit to government. It's two passages. Mind you that Peter is one and Paul. Paul wrote to the church in Rome. Here's what Paul wrote. In Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, Paul writes, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you shall have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good, but if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister as an avenger to execute wrath on him who practice evil. Therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers, attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore what is due. And then he speaks about taxes and so on. You can apply this passage to your local authorities, but above a local authorities who enforce the law, they are only enforcing laws that has been legislated, they're under the authority of governors and so forth. So, as general, we are to submit to the authorities, to our governing authority. Paul wrote this in Rome why Paul was being persecuted. Okay? Now, we have Peter. Peter writes in his first epistle, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. This is what Peter wrote. He said, Therefore submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to kings as supreme or to governors as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as a bondservant of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. With that said, we're still in the red as a church, in our, community, in our county, I'm sorry, Pike County is still in the red. So under Governor Wolf, under our government, we are not allowed to open our doors. Keep in mind that the law is not causing us to sin. The government is not causing us to sin, rather. This is different from what we find in the book of Acts. If you recall, Peter and John, they were sharing the gospel. They were sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were mentioning the name of Jesus. And there, the Sanhedrin council the rulers of their day have forbid them. We find that in Acts chapter 5, verse 28. This is what they said to them. The Sanhedrin council said to Peter and John, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood, speaking of Jesus, on us. This is an order, a command from the Sanhedrin council telling Peter and John not to preach Jesus. This is not what 
the govern, govern, governor, governor is doing. This is not what any governor is doing in any state in telling churches they cannot meet under these circumstances. So the, the government's order to keep the door closed is for safety and the well-being of the citizens is not a direct attack on the church. It's not a direct attack on the church. The government is not telling us that we cannot worship God. The government is not telling us to not preach the name of Jesus. The government is not saying that we should close our doors permanently or that we cannot have church meetings ever again. Since the state order is also applies to all the bars, the state order also applies to restaurants, most businesses, schools, colleges. They too cannot open their doors. So because this is for safety reasons, now some of us may disagree on how our governor is using uh, the state order to keep us from opening, how they go about keeping us in the red phase rather than having us in the yellow phase, we don't know. But one thing I do know is that this applies to bars, restaurants, businesses, schools, colleges, anywhere where people can sit for a certain amount of time. This is different when going to a store where you go in, purchase what you need, and get out. So it's different. This is not a deliberate attack against Christians. If, however, the state would say, hey, all restaurants can open up, all bars can open up, all schools can open up again in colleges, but the church cannot open. That's a different reason. That's a direct attack, attack on the church, you see. So looking at the scriptures as far as submitting to our government is one. Another thing we need to consider as believers, as Christians, and again, I am only speaking specifically to our fellowship, our church family at Calvary Chapel of Milford. Another thing we need to consider is our testimony. Not only to our community, not only to local officials, not only to our state, anyone that will probably keep an eye on us. People will follow us on Facebook. People will follow us on, the, on our web, on YouTube. Um, we need to keep a good testimony of obedient citizens, not people who are rebellious, okay? Our testimony is important. Here's what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 12, verses 17 and 18. This is what he wrote. He says, have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And he says in verse 18, if it is possible as much as depends on you, here it is, live peaceably with all men. And so we need to have a good testimony. It is not my desire to continue to have these doors closed by far. Because I miss the church family. I miss fellowship with my church family. It's always been my ministry. It's always been my life. I don't really enjoy uh, talking to a camera <laughs> and not get the feedback or see the faces and the expression. And people agreeing, people disagreeing, people are shocked, people are laughing. Elbow ministry, husband and wife, you know. Hearing the holy grunt, mm, praise the Lord. I miss those things. More importantly, I miss my family. I miss our times of agape fellowship. Where we, uh, every first Sunday of the month, we gather together. We all bring a dish, right? And we fellowship with one another. Some people call it potluck. We don't believe in luck, so we call it pot faith. We all bring a dish, and we eat by faith. No, just kidding. We just love to fellowship with one another. It's who we are. But I believe God is still in control. We've said that in unison, the church as a whole, since this all began, God is in control, God is in control. Now all of a sudden, we want to take matters in our own hand. I want to share 
with you, what I've shared, shared with my wife and other pastors that I love to talk to. Just, be, just last week, I was willing to start the service regardless of whether or not our government was going to allow us to have service. That was my attitude. Yes, 100%. I even shared with my wife, I said, well, we need to be ready because I might be arrested, but I am going to share the gospel and I don't care what the government says, we're going to have service. That was my heart, literally. And it just changed overnight by reading God's word. Yes, we should not forsake the gathering of the saints, the scripture tells us in Hebrew chapter 10. But that is the attitude of a person individually. That does not apply under the circumstances we're in right now. People are getting sick. People are dying from this virus. And so after seeking the Lord in prayer, after looking at scripture, I find more scripture telling me to be obedient, be submissive, and have a good testimony. You know, Moses misrepresented the Lord when the Lord told him, speak to the rock. Moses was angry because of Israel, and he misrepresented the Lord. I don't want to be that. More, I want to be in God's will. I want, to be, I want to be obedient where I need to be obedient. The scripture tells me to submit to the authority, to our governors. Now, with that said, I am not siding with any party. Okay? With that said, I, am, I know 100% that the church has been persecuted. From the beginning, since the first martyr in the book of Acts, Stephen. The church has been attacked by local authorities, governors, kings, and even to this day, and it will continue to be in persecution. So I am aware that there are those in, uh, elected into office that really do not like Christians, do not like God. I understand that. I understand there are many who are passing laws against the church, that I know, I am, as a pastor, I'm fully aware of those legislations that are being passed to attack the family, the unborn, and the church. I'm aware of that. But based on the facts, we need to look at facts. That has been my background as a police officer. Look at facts. You go to court, they want the facts. The facts is that this virus is real, it's contagious, and it can kill. Those are the facts. Regardless of the numbers, I understand there are other sicknesses that are killing people more, but this one is spreading worldwide, and this one is taking lives. That I know, regardless of the numbers in every, which varies in counties, states, and countries. Those are facts, and I look at the scripture, what the scripture has to say. It's telling me to be submissive. The church is not being closed by the shut down by the government. The government is not telling us to sin. The government is not telling us to deny God. The government, is not, the, government, the government is not saying that we cannot assemble. Unless that is our First Amendment right. We have the right to assemble. Freedom of speech, we do have that. That is not being taken away. I understand there are some uh, elected officials who are trying to do that. I understand. But let's look at the facts on this particular issue, on this virus. Well, another thing I want to leave with you, that we are a church. The church is not the building. <laughs> this building here is empty. It's only myself and a few who are helping me bring this to you live every Wednesday, every Sunday. But the church is the people. The people. We are the church. You are the church. And God is everywhere, and I believe God is doing the work out of this. I want to leave you, I want to not leave you, I want to just have this, share this video with you in regard of, regarding of, you know, the church. We are the church. Well, here we are. At home. In our 
living room. With our families. With those we love. Today, wherever you are located, know that you are not alone. You are not alone. We're still connected. Today, we gather as one body. One body. One body. Because the church is not a building. It never has been. It never has been. We gather today as one church. One church. To lift up one name. The name of Jesus. 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 So wherever you are, today is the day the Lord has made. Today is the day to give him thanks. So let's unite. Let's worship. Let's praise his name. For he is worthy of it today and every day because we are still the church. We are 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 the church. God sits in the throne. This is a time that I believe God has set aside. God's going to use this for good. And that's why my prayer is for you, for me, and everyone, just to be patient. Let us not be quick. Let us be patient. Let us take the time. We are the church. We need to spend time with the Lord. We need to follow Jesus Christ, and we need to probably do it at home. Maybe God needs to be brought back at the house, wherever you're at, wherever you are. And so we as a church have decided, we met together, the board and I, this past Monday, and we have decided under the circumstances based on scriptures of what we have, our county, Pike County, is still in the red, we're going to be obedient to that because we ought to. That's what the scripture tells us. Come, we're going to monitor this quick, uh, very closely. As soon as we get into yellow, and those restrictions are being lifted, we want to be obedient. This applies to not only churches. And so as soon as they allow businesses to open, restaurants, schools, and so forth, that includes us. And we need, we're going to do it with caution, of course, because not everybody is quick to gather. We know if we open up the church, there are going to be those who are still uh, concern and they want to, they're, con they're concerned for their safety and their loved ones and not anybody's going to come back running into the church I know I would <laughs> and, and we want to leave that open with that said it does for us we're not looking at what the church down the road is doing what other churches are doing across the nation around the world we are only talking about us, Calvary Chapel of Milford, and we are not going to judge. Let us not judge and say, hey, this is what we're doing. That church, you, you need to follow us. We're right. No, every church is different. I'm only responsible for the sheep God has entrusted us with. That's it. I'm responsible for Calvary Chapel of Milford. I'm not responsible for a group of churches or uh, the church uh, with, throughout the nation. I'm responsible for Calvary Chapel of Milford, and as your pastor, you know, I seek the Lord, and this is, I believe, this is biblical, this is scriptural, and this is, this is going to honor God, but we're going to honor, we're going to know, be known as a people who respects the Lord, we follow his word, and the word tells us to submit, and there we're going to submit under these circumstances. But I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged and pray for this nation, pray for this virus to pass, I know they're looking at another wave of viruses coming in in the fall. But until then, we're going to follow. We're in the red. We're going to be obedient. It's for the safety and health and well-being of all citizens. We care about you as much. We love you as well. And so we want you to know that we are concerned for your safety. At the same time, we want to be obedient to the government. So that's our decision. And we'll take it as, as we go into the yellow phase. Or if we get clear, uh, we'll take it as it comes. If it comes to the point where they say, oh, no churches can meet, but all the other bars and, and all these restaurants can open, then we have a problem again. But we want to be obedient. So that's our decision as Calvary Chapel Milford. We're going to continue to uh, uh, live stream our Bible studies and our worship services, and we're going to continue to stay connected as we've been doing. Um, if you need anything, please reach out to us. I want to leave you with this 
passage of scripture Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I love this part, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Saints, brothers, sisters in Christ, this is a promise from the Lord. Regardless of what we're going through right now, this is definitely, without a doubt, uh, setting up the stage for the end times. We are living in the last days, okay? Let us not grow weary. Let us not move in the flesh. Let us not go ahead. Let us look at the Lord. Let us look at scripture and see what God has to say with every situation. Things are gonna probably move fast. Let this world move fast, but move with the Lord. Don't go ahead of him. Don't stand behind him because that's considered trespass. You want to be with him. So this is our decision of Calvary Chapel of Milford. We love you. We're praying for you. Please, if you need anything, reach out to us. Until then, don't forget to join us this Sunday, May 17th at 10 a.m. as we continue our verse-by-verse Bible study of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20, and we're going to look at verses 17 to 34. So that's the Gospel of Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 to 34. And uh, I encourage you to go ahead and read it and study it. But please, pray for us. Pray for me and pray for my wife. Pray for our leadership. Pray for the Basilios. Pray for the stoners. Pray for the Dorleys. And pray for Schulers as well. Pray for all of us and those that serve. Pray. And pray for the universal body of Christ. I'm going to close in prayer. And um, let us seek the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, we want to be obedient to your word. We can never go wrong in any decision when we follow your word. We can never go against your will if we follow your word. And Lord, we want to be obedient. We want to honor you. We want to show a good testimony. Lord, we pray for uh, the governors. We pray for the elected officials. We pray for our president, President Trump. Lord, we pray for all the church, the universal body of Christ. May we love one another, encourage one another, and support one another, regardless of which direction we go as far as decisions on this. But Lord, one thing we do know is that you are our God. You have built a church, and the gates of hate would not prevail against it. You build a church, and we follow you. You're the ultimate uh, a shepherd, and we're the under-shepherds. And we are your sheep, Lord. We want to follow you, but we want to do that as well by being obedient to your word. We thank you, Lord, for being with us tonight. Bless those that are listening. Bless those that are in need. Bless those that are sick. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord be with you. Continue to pray for us. Good night.